Welcome to the Jet Experience. Today we find ourselves back at Disneyland, which of course is always one of our favorite places to go. We're gonna do something a little different today. Today we're gonna bring a lengthy list of hidden secrets and what I might call mysteries located throughout Disneyland. Some of which you might know, some of which you might not know, but if there's any uh, that we don't hit on that you know of, definitely make sure to drop a comment below and let us know and join us on this experience. So first up, which you can see we're right next to the tree, just inside the main entrance. Here's the main flagpole. There's no flag on it right now, because it is a little later in the night. But as we come down, if you've ever noticed, there's kind of a decorative, ornate black base to it. it and so since Disneyland, uh, obviously especially California Adventure side, but Disneyland as a whole is very rich in California history, this particular base here, it's from a, a broken piece of a light post from Wilshire Boulevard located in LA. So just a kind of a neat little trivia mystery type thing to kick this video off with. And we've got so much more to come. All right, so keeping in the theme of flagpoles, you'll note right here atop this building is a flag. And there's a couple different ones throughout Main Street. Like if I turn around and look at the corner of the Emporium, you can see another one up there. There's actually one right up here. It's not gonna focus on it. But at first glance, these look like real flags, but they actually only have 45 stars as opposed to the 50 that the, the current flag has. The only flag that has 50 stars is the one on the main flagpole that they actually raise and lower. But by doing this, they get to actually avoid having to follow strict flag rules by you know keeping it out of the weather and taking it down uh, having it lit up so any flag that you see throughout the park that isn't the normal flag uh, or the main flag up front just know that it is slightly altered and modified and not the true flag all right next cool thing which you might have walked right by hundreds of times and never even noticed you can see i'm right next to the castle and i'll kind of pan down a little bit and I'll show it to you. So let me get down here. We can kind of read it and I'll pause it. So it says the Disneyland 40th anniversary time capsule. Uh, so it's a time capsule. It was buried in the mid nineties and it's set in fact on January or July 17th, 95. And then it's set to be opened on July 17th, 2035. So it will have been buried for 40 years and was buried on the 40th anniversary. So it'll be opened on the 80th anniversary. And it'll have a collection of stuff, you know, kind of from Disneyland and during the uh, the 90s, that'll be opened in, uh, let's see, just, just over uh, 13 years from now. So assuming this channel's still going at that point, I will come on in and try and film them opening this. Okay, the next one we're trying, gonna try to do, oh, he just popped up right there. It's really hard to see, but the Cheshire Cat appears in this mirror pretty regularly. Every like, uh, probably 30 seconds or so. This is in the Mad Hatter shop right next to Alice in Wonderland and the teacups. But it's the, uh, the main mirror right in the front where the caterpillar is the frame. And then he just kind of uh, appears for a moment and then disappears. And there he is appearing again. I really hope this is showing up. And then he'll disappear after a moment. So now this one's kind of just like a neat one that you may have maybe been able to figure out just by looking at the geometry and configuration of the area. Uh, or if you're like me, never even occurred to you. So Alice in Wonderland here, it opened a couple years after the park opened in 1958. Obviously, when they opened, the park wasn't exactly the size that it is today. So whether or not the, uh, you know, the size of the park played a factor, Alice in Wonderland is actually built on top of and on the second floor of Mr. Toad's Ride. So next time you're here, if you look, you can realize that you've got Mr. Toad and then you walk around to the backside where you have the Mad Hatter shop where we looked at the Cheshire Cat. And then right behind that, 
is kind of where Alice in Wonderland goes in and pretty far back. So if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. So my guess is, is they were probably trying to maximize use of space before they had expanded the park and just use space that wasn't already, basically it was unused space. So that was genius thinking on their part. All right, so we're coming up to kind of a neat one, a super iconic scene in Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, it's a scene where you can see the prisoners there trying to coax the dog um, over with the keys. And it's been suggested that the dog is actually modeled after Walt Disney's own dog. That's super cool if they kind of did that little Easter egg. Oh, it's we stopped right in front of them to include Walt's dogs uh, own dog in here and that would be awesome and I don't see why they wouldn't do something like that so I've got a little light to help from my phone just because it's dark and it's really hard to see the true colors but I'll, I'll give the quick synopsis and then I'll kind of read a little bit uh, this kind of greenish color greenish gray that you can see right here uh, it's kind of throughout the park and it's it's a lot maybe we'll say less prevalent than it used to be. See, without the light, it kind of looks almost like a, like a whitish or a gray. Um, apparently it's called no see em green, uh, just like uh, it sounds, no see them, no see em. Uh, it's a color that the Disney Imagineers themselves created. Uh, and it's on a lot of like the buildings that like aren't supposed to be part of the park, as well as like uh, some of the older trash cans and stuff so that way people don't really notice them and uh, supposedly allegedly what it is is no see -um is supposed to be the most unobtrusive shade of that spectrum and it's basically meant to essentially disappear into the background so in other words the parts of the park that they don't really want people to pay attention to that are necessary but kind of take away from the magic they throw up that kind of greenish gray or grayish green color on it to hopefully make it just so it's almost like unappealing to the eye so when you look at it uh, it kind of disappears so like oh uh, let's see there's actually some trash cans over here as i'm over right next to the entrance to like club 33 you can see these here kind of painted a little bit like it too these kind of look like a little bit of a newer trash can, so it might not be the exact color, but I saw some really good examples of it when we were walking in when it was still daylight. Uh, almost like when you're walking the tram route right now, there's the, the cut, the, basically the cutout shape of a building, and it's just this kind of like blah grayish green, uh, which I've never, I mean, I've noticed before, but it never occurred to me that that was intentionally done as a color to kind of just make it disappear, almost like camouflage, if you will, like we do in the army, to make you basically disappear and hide into your surroundings. All right, so the last item on our list brings us over to a very familiar ride, our very favorite ride, Haunted Mansion. Now, the magic of movie editing is, it's probably gonna pop up right after this clip. So what I want you to do is go ahead and pause the video right now and before we get to the scene, comment down below what you think this little hidden secret's going to be and then press play after you've commented to see if you were right. Okay, so we're coming up to it. Down on the end of the Great Hall here, or the Grand Hall, is a spider on the glass but the spider is actually covering a bullet hole. And once it's a little less quiet, or a little more quiet, we'll talk about it. And you can see it right here. Okay, so now that we're not on the ride moving and uh, I didn't want to talk too much because I know it's, so, it's very loud in there. So basically general story to it is sometime i think it was basically in the mid 70s maybe around 74 back maybe when security was a little more relaxed here somebody you know a child or or you know maybe like a teenager brought in some sort of weapon it was a bb gun or a slingshot I, i've read all kinds of different uh basically versions of it but essentially they attempted to shoot the uh the portraits that duel and shoot and turn and shoot each other 
and because there's glass there uh, to create the effect of the ghosts, obviously it hit it hit the glass and and basically put a hole in it and then and then did a spider web fracture pattern. So that glass, if you've ever been in there, it's basically one giant continuous piece with no seams. So the only way they could get it out in one piece would be basically to take off the roof and remove it. Now again, this was back in the 70s. This was not, you know, last year. And then they'd have to get another piece in, probably an extraordinarily expensive piece of glass. So instead, what they decided to do was take probably a, you know, 20 cent or maybe even at that time, like a 10 cent plastic spider and maybe even add a little bit more webs to the crack to basically just cover it and uh, make it kind of match the decor with the mansion as a whole. So next time you're in there, and I'll be honest, I, for years and years I had never noticed it and then the first time I had heard about this and then I looked for it, it was painfully obvious that it was there but almost hidden to the fact where if you're not looking for it, you may not see it. And I don't know how well it's even gonna show up on the video, because um, I, I couldn't zoom at all, but I saw it from, the first time I saw it from like basically way down on the far right side, and I was like, yep, there it is. And then as you get close, if you focus on that instead of the background, you can really see all the cracks all around it. So very, very interesting history. All right, that wraps up this experience of bringing you hidden secrets at Disneyland. Really hope you learned something or at least were interested in some of this stuff. Uh, again, if there's anything I didn't mention that you know about, drop it in the comments below and then perhaps we'll make a follow-up video if I get a whole bunch of responses and then kind of show it edition number two. But we really hope you liked this video. So if so, please give us that thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. If you ring the bell below, you get notifications of all of our future videos. As always, please be kind and be real and join us on our next experience. So